devices, except you are recognized to speak. Secondly, all questions should be short and precise. Now, if you want to ask questions, just signify by raising up your hands. I would like to formally remind participants that the National Council for Arts and Culture is the cultural headquarters and has put modalities in place to continue setting the pace as regards the culture sector. Distinguished participants, permit me to formally introduce the convener of today's Zoom session, tagged COVID-19, Cultural Dynamism, which way forward. He is no other person than Otumba Ucheburu Sewego OM, Director General National Council for Arts and Culture, and President World Crafts Council, African Region. You are welcome, sir. Thank you. Today, Thank you we also have the keynote speaker, in the person of Mr. Oludotu Osusoya, former director of Performing Arts, National Council for Arts and Culture. He is a fellow theater arts. He is a member of several professional associations. He is in the right position to speak on the topic we have for today's Zoom session. COVID-19, cultural dynamism, which way forward. Major stakeholders here present, Members of the fourth estate of the REM, you are all welcome. Permit me, distinguished participants, to invite the convener of today's Zoom session to tell us why we are here. The Director General, sir. Thank you. Um, very distinguished participants, stakeholders, and industry players, it's my honor and pleasure to welcome you all to this Zoom conference which is to interact with the stakeholders and industry players as well. Let me first and foremost thank our Muslim brothers by wishing them happy Salah and the best of Ramadan. You all are aware that this is the month of peace and forgiveness. So we celebrate with our Muslim brothers and sisters and wish them all the best. Once again, I'd like to thank His Excellency, the Ambassador Mexico, for joining us today, the Head of Cultural Section for the Chinese uh, Embassy, also the Ambassador Excellency to Cuba. You are all welcome. In the course of this program, I will make more recognitions. May I also welcome you all to another edition, very exciting agenda setting, which is going to be for us to build a new focus for our industry as a people. Last week, we discussed the impact of COVID-19 in the creative industry. The topic of our discussion today is cultural dynamism. Dynamism, which is the way forward. We are all aware that coronavirus has become a global reality. But however, we must find a way out of it. So distinguished quality is my expectation that our discussion this afternoon will be free, frank, sincere, and robust, and insightful. Once again, I thank you all for joining us. I wish us happy deliberation and the best of this time. But let me emphasize quickly, the purpose of this forum is to create a platform for us to discuss and interact as industry players and also to share experience 
with other countries of the world. For instance, we'll be happy to hear some few comments from Mexico, since His Excellency, the Ambassador, is right here with us. We're also going to hear from China. The head of cultural section is with us. And Her Excellency, the Ambassador to Cuba, and so many other industry players, it's my pleasure to welcome all of you. And it's on this note, it's I want to welcome Mr. Dotsu Susoya, who is the guest speaker for today. One of the best aunts we have in the industry. And I assure you, it will be a time to remember. Mr. Dotsu, over to you, please. Thank you very much. Somebody is the speaker. Put him back, let that man be perfect. Where did mommy uh, see. When mommy did her own, she was not speaking. Mr. Dotun, over to you, please. Mm. Okay, uh, good, good afternoon, on. ladies and gentlemen. Okay. I'd Mark. like first and foremost to thank the convener of this meeting. Uh, Director General of NCAC. Uh, I'd like to commend him for the meeting, but also I'd like to commend him for leading Nigeria's adoption of a very, very current technology, the Zoom technology. This is the kind of leadership that we are hoping will be brought to bear within the sector and also indeed within the country. Of course, Zoom is very current and it has experienced 300% in usage in the last few months. That is not an accident. It is a reaction to a reality, COVID-19. It is that COVID-19 that has informed what we are doing today in terms of the discussion as to cultural dynamism. Cultural dynamism has always been very relevant, but COVID-19 brought it to the center table. I'd like to spend a minute or two to set this background. The first thing I want us to remind ourselves, I know you all know this, is that COVID-19 is not the world's first pandemic. That fact may stay us in the face, but we may just comfortably forget it. It is something that has occurred again and again. When the concept of pandemics first came up, it was measured in terms of what was then the known world. But as humanity began to get integrated, traveling, interaction became easier. People lived in greater proximity, both to one another and to animals. Diseases also came up. In the beginning, the world did not know how to handle it. But as time went on, by force of reaction, uh, certain standards were developed. And these are the kind of things that are also coming on now we are going to react willy-nilly to COVID-19, whether we decide to or not. COVID-19 is here. It is going to force certain changes in us. And the most important thing that we need to do now is to prepare for that change. If we deny it, the first thing is to accept that that change has come. The world is not going to be the same post COVID-19. That is something we need to get into our brains. Therefore, the mo most important thing that we need to do is to set up or dust up our change management mechanisms. And the most important tool in this respect is culture. That is why I'm reminding us of some of the elements of culture, how culture is formed and how culture moves. I won't begin to repeat to us definition of culture. We all know this. But uh, uh, deriving from this definition, we know that culture touches every aspect of our lives, and that has nothing to do with whether we admit it or not. Culture is a tool for coping with our environment, our experience. Culture is dynamic, and culture is a tool for asserting our identity within a community of uh, nations, individuals, and whatever. Now, one thing that we also miss is that any entity that exists What's yeah. Yeah. 
Did you meet him? Maybe you meet him, sir. No, I'm meeting him here. Please go there. Where are you meeting? You meet him. You meet him. No, you meet him here. He's showing red here. I said he's showing red here. We can convince him. Okay. Uh, okay. Please go ahead. <clears throat> Please okay. go ahead. Yes, I, I was saying that the most important thing that we need to take from this is that COVID-19 is not new. It is not um, COVID and pandemics generally, they are not new. They've always been with us. What is new about COVID-19 is the area of its coverage, the extent of its expanse. And that derives from the fact that the world lives in closer proximity one to another now. A man can wake up in Nigeria, take his breakfast in Nigeria, take his lunch in the US, his dinner in uh, maybe UK. These are possibilities. It means that a man can move very quickly over a very large geographical area. And so if any such uh, thing as this kind of virus takes root in a place, it can be very across. And so I'm saying that the fact that COVID-19 is there and that it is going to enforce certain changes is one that we need to first and foremost accept as fact because it will touch us whether or not we accept it. So the first thing is accept that it is there. Now, in coping with this change, our most potent tool is culture. And we need to remind ourselves of certain elements of culture, the fact that it touches everything, the fact that it is a tool for coping with change and our environment, the fact that it changes, the fact that you are having a certain kind of culture today does not mean that that is what you are going to have forever. It also helps us to um, assert mm -hmm. our identity. Culture operates under two important pressure directions. It is, well, when you want to use academic language, you say the century petal and the century figure. But in very simple terms, it is an us, them definition. When you make cultural cho choices, you make them either because you want to be identified with a group or you want to be distinguished from a group. But whichever way we look at it, since I, I know this is an August gathering, what we want to go straight up to is how does cultural dynamism help us to manage this change that we have accepted is going to be here with us. Now, two kinds of things trigger a change. One is new knowledge. The other is an event. Now, when pandemics fall into that second category, they are an event. Two things. You make a choice if it is something you have a choice about. But there are certain other cultural elements that you don't have a choice about. For example, you don't have a choice about which family you are going to belong to. There's no choice about which tribe you are going to come from, which nation you come from. In this instance, you need to prime up something else, which is your attitude. How do you react to that reality which is there and will not go away? Now, um, these are the things that I would like us to spend more time on. If there are questions, I can return to the culture thing later on. The first thing you want to know about change is that it's not always obvious. It can be insidious. Change can go under gradually. You don't notice it until result is upon you. The next... It's better again. It's better again. Please tell the, the speaker is muted. Mm -hmm. yes, sir, we can't hear you. Are those in the middle. You cannot hear me? No, go ahead, go ahead. We can hear you. Go okay. ahead. Go okay. ahead. Yes. Then there are those in the middle. Usually, that is those who join after the avant garde and before the rear guard. Usually, they are in the majority. Now, what I want to implore us as cultural sector practitioners, creatives, and as a nation 
is that we should recognize that as much as possible, we should try to be among the avant-garde, among the earliest, because they always come with some kind of advantage. Now, who are the people to manage this change situation? Naturally, we'll, everybody will say, okay, the government represented largely by the head of state and leadership of the political class. But it is important that we also remind ourselves that these people cannot be everywhere every time. Neither do they have all the capabilities needed to cope with this change. Therefore, there must be other levels at which we, others, respond to this. And I want to call attention to these other people. We, we have sectoral leaders, uh, economic sector leaders. We have institutional leaders like the DG of NCAC is doing now. We have leaders of professional groups. And of course, we have leaders of societal groups like clans um, and families. Every level of leadership as indicated must take full responsibility for its own span of operation. Now, I'm going to then quickly talk about the cultural it's sector. It's the, cultural sector in the cultural sector is peculiarly placed because the cultural sector has its own challenges from COVID-19. It has challenges that are of its own, that is, that affect it directly. Things like, okay, uh, cultural places are not being visited, uh, tourism, uh, cultural tourism places are empty at this moment, there's going to be loss of employment, there's going to be greater risk of insecurity in places where you have things of cultural value <coughs> because everybody is busy saving his life. Really the criminals will use this opportunity to pillage those places. But you can't hear him now, please. He's muted here. Yeah. He has muted his mic again. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, we can hear because you. Because the, okay, because uh, cultural itself is an important tool for managing this change. We must go beyond ourselves. Of course, we cannot neglect ourselves. We have to cope with those problems that relate to the cultural sector directly. But we must also help the larger society to recognize the value of culture in dealing with this new situation. We must help them to come to the appropriate sense, um, appropriate realization that will enable them, rather than going elsewhere and seeking non-valid um, tools, it's to it's use it's culture it's as it's the it's primary it's tool it's for coping it's with this change. Uh, I've talked about the time span. Now, when change, this kind of cataclysmic change is upon us, there are things that will happen. One of the reasons, one of the things that will happen is that certain changes that have been occurring, just like I talked about the arithmetic growth in, in your child, that you don't notice, certain changes that have been occurring around us will come more into consciousness. More people will become aware of them, and then more people will adopt them. And some of this I will draw attention to. One of them, of course, is things like technology now, like the Zoom technology that we're talking about that enables people to meet across distance. Now it is not until you congregate in a place that you can hold a meeting. But I will draw attention to some other things quickly. There are two things which today, they are intangible, but today in the world, they are regarded as commodities. And they are very important in uh, this process that we're talking about. They are data and attention. Data has always been important, but in recent times, because new technologies have enabled us to capture data faster and to process them faster and in larger, uh, in larger sizes, what we call the big data, it has thrusted its step upon our attention. And if we look around, you will see that some of the countries that have done quite well with dealing with this COVID experience, they, they are mastery of the use of data has been very, very important. When you talk of uh, countries like Korea, countries like Senegal, and a, a few others like that, the, the fact that they had previous experience and had record of these experiences was 
very important in the way they handled it. Now, Nigeria needs to be conscious of the fact that data is not something you capture after maybe a month or two months after the event. There are now tools for capturing data real time online and analyzing it. There are now tools for capturing data that are separate as maybe a million kilometers apart and synthesizing them. What is attention? Attention is the number of people you can reach when you send out information. It also relates to how fast you can reach those people. And finally, it relates to how believable will, uh, will they relate to what you are saying. Uh, it is a sad fact today that possibly Google knows more about Nigerians than we know about ourselves, than maybe any federal agency knows about us. Because as Nigerians are on the internet daily, Google is capturing data that tells them about us. Also, they can reach faster than some of these agencies can. But these are things that can and must change. And how do we now use this to engineer the change that we're talking about? There's a process, it is not very popular, it is cultural engineering. We must give people reason to believe in what we're doing. We must incentivize them. That is it. We must now make sure that we position our government agencies in such a way that they can get government, uh, not just government information and government position now, but new positions, new relevant positions out and make people believe it. The fact is there is another tool, a final one that I'll mention, and that is benchmarking. When we want to engineer change, we must have a way of defining where we are, defining where we want our citizenry to go to within a certain given period, and then choose what we consider to be the appropriate method for making them move of their own accord. That is very important. It's not going to be done by others from one point to another. These are things that I want to uh, immediately mention. I want to remind us that I said the cultural sector has a responsibility to itself, but beyond that, it has a responsibility to, um, to the larger society. Now, what are the kinds of changes that I expect? Some uh, immediately, certain, certain uh, like this uh, stay at home order has imposed certain changes on us. We are considering, I will just, I made a list here, but the idea is not to give us an exhaustive list, but to indicate the direction in which we, uh, we should be looking and the direction in which we'll be thinking. Now, people are going to willy-nilly uh, be forced to have improved personal and public hygiene. People are going to rethink the idea of gathering. Uh, people will think twice before they call it gathering now. People will insist on their personal space and the better management of this space, people will rethink the frequency and the mode of transport from when even the transportation becomes necessary. Issues like town planning will need to be revisited. We, we talked of community infection. Some of these things in towns, you can easily separate yourself from your neighbor. But in some of our villages and suburbans, the town layout is such that even at your worst, you must be in some amount of contact with your neighbor. And even uh, that is difficult to manage. We need to go back and review our town planning. Uh, workspace management. There was an instance in, in, in Korea, for example, where because somebody visited an office, uh, quite a number of people got infected within just about two or three days. But what was nice about the situation was that the government had record of who and who entered. So it was immediately possible to monitor who and who could have been exposed within that. So workspace management, sharing of offices, um, space, and because of this, the idea of remote working spaces, working from home is going to become more and more popular. Also, physical shopping will, yield way to online shopping. Uh, like I said, COVID is not just starting with COVID-19. Uh, there was COVID-13 in China, for example. And the record shows that 
that COVID-13, which was localized in China and which lasted roughly about six months, greatly re-engineered two things amongst the Chinese. The idea of online shopping and the idea of non-cash payment became much more popular after that. And then, of course, I had mentioned this uh, issue of cash. Then, with the issue of teleconferencing as against physical meetings, something that has happened that we probably do not know. Because some parents are for the first time in a long time, or even for the first time ever, being trapped at home with their children, the family interactions, the testing of family cohesion has occurred. What will come out of that, we do not know. I also want to mention the fact that the issue of finance will also become very important. Um, the, most of the time, some institutions have only one line of income, and that needs to be reviewed, because once that one line has been challenged in this experience, they became totally clueless and almost paralyzed. One other thing that we will need to work on is the issue of stigma. After this, and already it's happening, some people are already labeling who was uh, infected and who was not infected. It is important that we help these people to reintegrate into society with as little hiccup as possible. Now, what kind of responses should we prepare for this change? Basically, response that relates to the individual. A lot of individuals are asking the question, in all these, am I supposed to starve to death? And that is why you have the unfortunate situation where government says stay at, stay at home, and some people are saying, look, hunger is worrying me a lot more than COVID. I want to come out whether you like it or not. Then, um, so in these individuals, we need to meet them at their point of need. And it is not something we will do just flippantly like that. We we'll have to think it through. Institutions will also need to re be reorientated and also um, the way we handle them and the way we administer them will change. I want once again to commend NCAC in leading this kind of um, change here because some other parastatas will simply have gone to sleep after this. Government itself will also have to change certain things. But what I want to plead with us is this, that in managing this situation, we should not take only reactive measures, reacting to things that are, are happening or uh, doing things that will give us short-term or even mid-term palliatives. We should set it as an aim to have legacy reactions. Amongst these that I recommend is that within Nigeria, for example, there will be a need for greater cohesion amongst government agencies, and that more so amongst within the cultural sector. There will be there will be a need to, for greater working ties between the federal government parastatas on the one hand. There will be need for greater ties between the federal parastatas and their state equivalents. There will be need for greater ties between federal parastatas and the cultural stakeholder uh, community. This, in doing this, like I said, it should not be immediate or midterm solutions that we're looking at, but we should be looking at legacy things. Some of our decrees, for example, that are dated, we need to quickly go and review them. We need to review the way our cultural institutions, especially federal government agencies, are funded in such a way that it is effective and enables great ideas to get to the market as fast as possible. Or, well, the market, I'm using that word market very loosely now, to the ultimate beneficiaries. These are the things that I am saying we must do. I know that this is supposed to be more of an interactive session than me talking um, ideas to people. So I'll quickly summarize. That the first thing I want us to remember is that COVID-19 is not the first pandemic. Pandemics have been there through history. In the beginning, man did not have to undo them. He has evolved methods, however, in the process. Uh, just a reminder. Uh, the word quarantine, for example, uh, is when, when um, epidemics started showing up, sometimes the, the most extreme methods were used. Sometimes villages were bound, 
Sometimes, you know, even uh, people were burnt in those processes until somewhere in around 1347 in Italy, somebody called the idea that, okay, fine, since we are not sure whether these people are affected or not, let them stay aside for some time. And the first idea was 30 days. Later, it went on, it was done in uh, 13. But later, they increased it to 40 days. And that is where quarantine came from. Uh, the idea that, okay, separate these people until we are sure they are not affected. Also, I'm saying that this change must occur at different levels, the individual level, institutional level, societal level, and then finally, government level. I also said that we should remember that there are different levels of leadership. It will be very stupid of us to think that it is government that must alone be responsible for driving this change that we're talking about. Uh, another point that was made here is that there is no other tool that is more potent for dealing with this change than culture and the process of cultural engineering or incentivizing cultural change. I also reminded us that the cultural sector is itself affected. It has its own issues, things like uh, loss of income and all that. But the cultural sector has a larger responsibility. It cannot just focused on its own problem alone. It must also go help government and other cultural entities, families, societies, to also realize and use the tool of culture for solving the problem that is facing us. Finally, I try to urge us that we should not do only reactive things. Try to find solutions like uh, the ones that will help us in one week or in one month or even in one year. We should try to do legacy things. If there are need, if there is need for structural changes within our economy, if there is need for change within any particular sector, like the cultural sector itself, with some of its uh, challenges in terms of the decrease financing, we need to use this time to uh, do that and make sure that it is done um, properly. And I said finally that our solutions will be such that. If and when the next pandemic comes or any challenge of similar magnitude, we'll be a lot more prepared using that ultimate, that essential tool of culture to take it. Thank you very much. I want to thank everybody for listening to me and uh, I will be ready now to get into the um, interactive discussion session. <coughs> um, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Dotu Square, that is um, a wonderful and very insightful paper you've uh, just delivered. It tells us a lot about what this industry can offer. And like I did promise a lot of our practitioners a few days ago that we're going to have a very strong uh, presentation in terms of cultural dynamism. But um, distinguished participant, it becomes my honor and pleasure to welcome some of our um, international friends online right now. Uh, the Excellency, the Ambassador to Cuba, Mrs. Clara Palermo. You are welcome, Your Excellency. <laughs> it's nice to have you with us. My brother and my friend, the ambassador to Syria. It is my pleasure to um, welcome you joining us at this time. Our dear brother, my good friend, the ambassador to Venezuela. It's nice to see you, David. Fantastic. Yeah, thank you very much. We also have um, the gentleman who we are competing height with, His Excellency, the ambassador of Mexico. Ajedrondo, it's nice to have you. And my dear partner that we've been working together on so many things, Excellency Ambassador to Bangladesh. It's nice to have you with us. We also have our good brother, the cultural head in the Chinese Embassy, Mr. Li, you welcome. And the other attache is um, Mr. Wang from China too, from the Chinese Embassy. The cultural attaché to Indian, Yogesha Kumpla, 
we are very happy to have all these wonderful um, <clears throat> Nigeria. I mean, our excellencies in Nigeria to enjoy the best of our time. The, uh, from the Russian Embassy, Mr. Ivan, you're also uh, welcome. Daniel Smith from Toronto in Canada. I'm going to recognize more as the time goes on. I'm extremely excited. Um, Francis Nagola, the High Commissioner to Tanzania. We are so happy to have you. Um, I will do more recognition very soon. And um, <clears throat> may I use this opportunity to remind our international friends, maybe from next session, we'd like to share with them what they feel and what's happening in their own country. We could share what's happening in this COVID-19 among the two countries. Right now, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor and pleasure to invite just a short comment. We need all the time to be able to accommodate more uh, comments <laughs> from everyone. Can I respectfully invite the ambassador to Bangladesh to give us a quick one or two minutes quickly, and then we come back to um, other excellencies and the floor will be fully open. Ambassador to Bangladesh, quickly, please. Ambassador to Bangladesh, we're waiting for you. Okay, maybe we quickly go to, um, quickly the ambassador to Venezuela, my brother Davis, Venezuela. Yes. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Excellency. Thank you so much for this invitation. It's a pleasure and honor to stay with you and other distinguished guests. Uh, these days we are celebrating in Venezuela the centennial anniversary of the, one of the most important poetry, uh, Aquiles Aníbal Lasoa. Aquiles Lasoa. Uh, and also for the next uh, Monday, 25th of May, we are preparing diverse activities, different activities because it's the African day. In our case, uh, we are using different mechanisms to continue working in this uh, uh, proposal about the cultural dynamism by social networks, by internet, by uh, special activities with the uh, COVID uh, prevention measures. In Venezuela, the cultural activities are continuing uh, doing and con we are continuing working. The minister, uh, the president, Nicolas Maduro, we are online producing books, producing uh, videos and other activities. This uh, situation, the COVID-19, in this moment is uh, the new situation, but together, all the countries in the world, all the people uh, can, uh, to start to maintain this dynamism. Uh, thank you so much again. I will stay with you until 3 p.m. because we have another uh, similar uh, meeting with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Venezuela, but this is a big pleasure, it is a uh, big honor stay with you, my brother and sister. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. It's nice to have you with us. Can I quickly call the ambassador to Mexico, Al Gerando? Good afternoon. And first of all, please, uh, I want to take the first opportunity to congratulate you for this meeting, for putting us, all of us together and to share this experience. I also want to recognize the guest speaker for an excellent intervention in the relationship between this pandemic, the COVID-19 and culture. And I, I will be very brief, but what I would like to tell you is that we in Mexico do recognize, as you do here, the value of culture as an instrument that is key to get us closer to our community. Our community needs us wherever we are and wherever they are. And the way to get to them 
is recognizing the common values that we have, that we share. So in Mexico, we're putting together a, a program in which everybody can have access through internet and other digital platforms about what is our archaeology, our history, our literature, our books, all and new, our film industry, and open access to our museums, and to have a common space for us and to share with the world while we are at home uh, keeping us safe. So thank you for this invitation. I know that we're short of time, and I do want to take this opportunity again to congratulate you for this initiative and hopefully to participate with you in common initiatives about recognizing the value of culture during this pandemic. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, the Ambassador to Mexico. This is wonderful, distinguished participant. What I'm trying for us to achieve today is to share with other countries what is happening in COVID-19 before we go to the guest lecturer. May I quickly call Mr. Lee from the Chinese Embassy. Mr. Lee, please quickly. Hello, my special thanks to the DJ of NCAC and everybody in the meeting. A very good afternoon to you all. Good afternoon. The, good afternoon. Thank As you very the much. the cultural counselor of the Chinese Embassy, I'm very honored to be invited and join you at today's function. Today, I still remember that in the morning of February 28th, I went to University of Abuja and uh, with our Chinese, uh, local Chinese uh, doctor to give a lecture on the prevention of COVID-19. And in the same morning, the first case of COVID-19 was reported in Nigeria. Since then, two months passed and uh, more confirmed cases were reported. I think now it's really a critical moment. At uh, this critical moment, I think it's really right time for NCAC to organize such an event which give us a platform to talk together and give our advice, suggestions for the good of our countries and the people. Regarding the COVID-19, we say it's a public health emergency of international concerns. As we know, all of countries work together since it's broke out. And I think the Chinese embassy, we also try our best. You can see last week, I, on behalf of the Chinese embassy, donated some anti-COVID-19 me medical material to 100 schools in FCT area. And I think that will be help those, uh, the government to reopen the school and uh, make everything go well. In general, despite some challenges and difficulties, despite uh, China remain dynamic in its culture and the creative sector, and uh, its market continues to expand, offers all other countries, including Nigeria, an increasing number of opportunities. And uh, with regard to creative industry in Nigeria, in my eyes, Nigeria has rich creative industry with, with great potential. I made this conclusion based on the following facts. First, Nigeria has already become the biggest economy in Africa. Second, Nigeria is the most populous country in Africa, especially so many young people are Nigerians priceless human resources which is very critical for the development of its creative industry. And uh, as to the topic of COVID-19, cultural dynamism, which way forward, I want to provide uh, four suggestions to our Nigerian friends. First, uh, the government uh, should make uh, favorable policies and uh, set up funds for the development of the industry. As Nigeria seeks to diversify its economy away from the indebtedness on oil revenue, 
the creative industry should be given priority in government's agenda. For example, increase employment support for the uh, creative industry. Second, talent training for developing the industry should be served as a primarily intellectual support. Yesterday, the third session of the 13th National People's Congress kicked off in China. Chan Chinese Premier Li Keqiang delivered the annual government work report. In this report, he disclosed that this year and next, China will provide more than 35 million vocational skill training opportunities and uh, grow enrollment in vocational college by 2 million. The Chinese government built a talent pool to reserve talents for China's future development. We call this kill two birds with one stone. First, it's good to relieve the employment pressure caused by COVID-19. Second, it's very useful for China to train talents for the future. And the third point is, it's a very good way to establish an alliance among cities internationally and make favorable policies to accelerate the international development of cities' creative industry. And I think in this field, like in the future, we can push forward the cultural exchange and cooperation between Abuja and Beijing, and maybe push forward the cultural exchanges between Lagos and London and Paris, you know, big countries throughout the world make the cultural exchanges corporations together. And the last point I want to say, Nigeria can focus on the following three major creative industries in your country. The television industry, the film industry, and the fashion industry, and encourage business startups and the innovation in those three major industries. And I think today there are so many distinguished guests attend the function, and the time is very limited. I don't talk it in detail. So before concluding my speech, I want to say that nowadays, we are standing at a critical moment in the fight against COVID-19, which for the international community, should be a time of cooperation, a time of cooperation and stand together. No country can fight alone in this war. So let's stand together, fight together, and get through the crisis together. I'm confident that Nigerian government has the capacity to win the war against the virus. And I'm also confident that Nigerian creative industry will write a new chapter in the future. Thank you so much. And the um, explosion on how we can work with China. To be honest with you, Mr. Lee, I'm extremely very grateful on behalf of the industry for this wonderful uh, comments of yours. Thank you very much. Can I quickly call our excellency the ambassador to Cuba, Mrs. Clara M. Ambassador to Cuba. Do you hear me now? Yes, please, go ahead, Our Excellency. Thank you, Thank you very much, Herman, and dear brother. Okay, thank you, First of all, allow me, allow me to say Ramadan Mubarak to our uh, Muslims, brothers and sisters. We should and say. Also, and also, I want to congratulate all Africans because of the African Day. Of course, in Cuba, we are also suffering the situation linked to COVID-19. And I want to underline that we have been taking measures as like everywhere, like in Nigeria, you are also working. But I have to say that the same than in Nigeria, the personalities of the culture in Cuba are working very, very hard regarding the fighting against COVID-19. If, of course, the front line is covered by our medical personnel, the doctors, the nurses, 
the, 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 the people of the culture have been very, very linked between all their job and all their efforts to educate our people struggling against COVID-19, as also the cultural people here in Nigeria, the big singers, the big actors and actors from Nollywood, and every person from the culture in Nigeria are also linking the fighting against COVID-19. We also want to mention that to, at, the, at the moment that we are speaking here today, there are 31 Cuban medical brigades working in Africa. So it means that the Cuban doctors are not only fighting coronavirus in, in, in Cuba, but also in Africa. The last brigade arrived in Togo last month, and they have joined the struggle against COVID-19 in this broader country, which is so close to Nigeria. And of course, if we are talking about culture, even in times of coronavirus, we cannot forget the the great influence of the African culture in Nigeria, particularly the Nigerian influence in, in Cuban culture. And uh, I, I can mention a lot of Cuban institutions, Cuban cultural institutions that are doing a, a good job regarding the links between Cuba and Africa and Cuba in Nigeria, like the National the Folkloric Ensemble, like the Museums of Regla and Guanabacoa, like the Casa de Africa, it means African house, a full museum devoted to African culture. But what I want to underline today is that those, all those institutions now, even in times of COVID, are celebrating the African Day in Cuba. Because for us in Cuba, the African Day is part of our yearly program of activities. This year, of course, it has been different because, because of COVID-19 but we have managed to produce uh, several uh, activities and initiatives in order to link the, the respect for the African culture, to express our love for Africa. And uh, we have called this campaign this year, African Challenge. Because it is true, it is a challenge to celebrate African Day in times of COVID-19. We cannot go to, to theaters, we cannot go to stadiums, we cannot go to, to big places to celebrate African Day but through the social, the, the, the social network, we have been producing a very important uh, campaign this year, and I wanted to allow you to know this. It means that we have to adjust ourselves to the real situation that we are facing. We have to fight COVID-19 together. It ha we need to have global solutions because if it, it's a global pandemic, but at the same time, we can't continue. A, a so important day like the African Day 25 of, of May, and I want to once again congratulate all my African brothers and sisters. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, the Ambassador to Cuba, um, you can hear how we are sharing views. I beg all participants to be a bit patient. Let's share with other countries to show the love oh, Nigeria has oh, yeah. to the world. Can I quickly call His Excellency? the ambassador to Bangladesh. Ambassador to Bangladesh. Bangladesh, Excellency. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, Excellency, we can hear you. Please, Excellency, okay, a quick one. Much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me uh, to this very interesting session. Uh, I was enjoying uh, the interventions. Uh, at the outset, let me sincerely thank the distinguished um, presenter, the panelist, uh, who shared lots of useful, um, important issues. And I think in the process, we, it enriched us in this audience today. So, I, I think that uh, as we, all of us, and, and, and the amount of interest uh, your um, initiative has generated is very clear with the participation of so many, a good number of ambassadors, diplomats, and not to mention about um, representatives from different sectors, stakeholders, etc. I congratulate the distinguished director general for the initiative. So coming back to the issue, which is being discussed today, I think as we understand and agree that the COVID-19 has put us 
uh, pushed us to a situation where we need to um, think about reformulating our taking a to re-strategize for the post-COVID situation. Uh, I, we can see lots of challenges left and right, but I think there are lots of opportunities also. And I think this creative industry has huge potentials and Nigeria is, mm -hmm. is the largest economy of Africa and it's uh, very pertinent to mention that it is culturally very rich and uh, this industry can offer a lot, not only for Nigeria but also other countries who, who want to benefit from it. So I think the situation will change, I mean the COVID-19 situation, and, uh, and it will, and, and good days are ahead, and I hope that all can put our effort collectively so that we can uh, reach to our um, desired targets. So on behalf of the High Commission of Bangladesh, I can only assure uh, the two Director General that we will be with all your good initiatives in future as we have and uh, our best wishes are always with you, sir. Thank you for inviting me. The outing shares with us what is happening in Bangladesh. Can I quickly call the cultural attaché to India, Mr. Yogesh? Mr. Yogesh, voice. cultural attaché to India. Mr. Yogesh, please. Hello, good afternoon. Can you please hear yeah, me? Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Yogesh. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah, we can hear you. you. Yeah, yeah. So, just first of all, let me thanks on behalf of uh, yeah, High Commissioner of India and High Commissioner of India to Director General NCSC and his team for organizing this uh, cultural discussion. It is really very beneficial on this occasion when most of us are working from home or working uh, at limited extent from offices. So culture is definitely going to play an important role in bringing some positivity during this difficult time. And as uh, distinguished speakers have shared their concern about this difficult time, we also share that uh, we together will rise to the occasion and we hope that uh, good time will come again and we will share our cultural diversities uh, here in Nigeria for, uh, for uh, the benefit of uh, mankind. And uh, during this tough time also, like uh, our Indian Council for Cultural Relations uh, they, they are uh, doing some innovation like uh, last month they 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 proposed to uh, organize a global uh, competition painting competition on this uh, theme of covid 19 to bring out creativity from the artists uh, who can display their emotions and feelings uh, while working from home to Give uh, hello. Yeah, yeah. So I, I will I will uh, conclude by saying this much only. We uh, and I will I wish all the very best to NCSC DG and his team, and uh, we hope to see our cultural programs again on full swing very soon. Thank you, DG and his team. Thank you very much. Well, it's a pleasure to have you with us in all the programs. You are um, a distinguished participant. You can see how informative it is for us to interact with other parts of the country. We are having over 15 ambassadors with us. This is a privilege for us to share with other parts of the world and to show love to other parts of the world. Thank you very much. Can I quickly call Mr. Francis Wakara, the High Commissioner to Tanzania? Quick one. Just a minute or two, please. Tanzania.
Okay, it seems it's lost signal. And Tanzania has lost signal. We'll come back to him shortly. Can I quickly invite Kofi Nezos from United States of America, the founder of African Museum for Arts and Culture. Mr. Kofi Nezos, you visited me in Nigeria last year. It would be nice to hear from you the progress of the report. Please go ahead. And can you hear me? Absolutely, we can, please. Yeah, good afternoon, all participants. Good afternoon, DG. Uh, it's a pleasure being on this forum today. Uh, I, I, it's true that we visited Abuja exactly uh, a year ago. We actually landed there on 6th of May, 2019. And since then, we've, uh, we've made a lot of progress since we've been back here in the US. Um, right now, before the pandemic, We've already talked to, uh, we've already had our financier that people are going to finance our project. As we are aware, our project is a combination of two things, African Museum of Art and Culture and a 26-story hotel building side by side. So we've already um, secured guarantee loan for 300 million to start the project, but because of, um, it, uh, COVID-19, everything, uh, pretty much, we've not had discussions since then, but uh, because of the lockdown in, uh, in our state here in Virginia, but last week, the governor just lifted that. Uh, so uh, from next week, we'll be talking to all our stakeholders, including the local government and all the people involved in our project so that we can have a way forward. And we'll keep the NCNC posted of every development, and uh, we truly appreciate that for all what you've done for us since we've been to Nigeria and also we look forward in you know, uh, highlighting the culture of the world for humanity because that is what our project is all about. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much, Mr. Kofi. That is wonderful. We're happy to join hands with you in that project. Can I quickly call my brother and friend, His Excellency, the Ambassador to Syria, from American straight to Syria, Mr. Adu. Syria, please. Do you hear me like this? Oh, Your Excellency, I can hear you very well. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, invitation, my brother. I'm so happy to join you and our colleagues through this meeting. I'm and glad to be joining you uh, also. I am uh, appreciate for this also uh, congratulations for African Day. Uh, let me to enjoy this time with my colleagues here to hear from them and from your staff. Thank you for everything. Thank you very much, my brother. Thank you. Your words are very short but very punchy. We are very happy to join and with you from time to time. Thank you, Excellency. You know the city. Situation in our area. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Excellency. I'm very okay, grateful. Yes, can I quickly go once again to from Syria to Russia? Is Mr. Evan from the Russian Embassy available now? It lost. It's still lost in signal. Okay. Um, distinguished participant, ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor and pleasure to now open the floor with Daniel Smith from Toronto, Canada. A minute, please, just a minute. Daniel Smith from Toronto, Canada. Can we have you quickly? Okay, um, I think signal problem from Toronto. Distinguished participant, can you identify if you wish to make a comment or ask a question? Please, can you signify with your hand? Up there, so we can recognize you quickly. We are open up. Please. Um, I think Mrs. Ungozi, Ungozi, you have the floor quickly. What is the first one? Yes. Ungozi, you have the floor. Yes, Madam Ungozi. Please, you have the floor quickly, please. Yeah, Ngozi, please. Go ahead. 
This is Mrs. Ebirim. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you very clear. Okay, can I speak on? Yes, speak on. Go ahead. We can hear you. All right. My own contribution is to say that it is very heartwarming that all through this COVID-19 lockdown, artists and craftsmen all over Nigeria and all those in the crop cultural and creative industries in Nigeria have occupied themselves with producing innovative creation. This goes a long way to show that our sector is one that does not sleep no matter what. Our sector is very dynamic. This is implement these works as a legacy to this period. Everybody knows that the DG NCS have already done a lot along this line. I suggest that we have a post COVID creation exhibition at the end of this lockdown. This is my own contribution. Thank you. <laughs> so what do I okay. Hello? Hello, Ngazi, you can, I'm replying. Back to you, thank you very much for your contribution and intervention. Post-COVID exhibition 19 will be a thing of reality. But let me quickly mention something to all of us. NCAC is going to develop a document with all your pictures and your comments, which will serve as that post-COVID-19 as an instrument for history and to tell the story of how Nigeria managed post, I mean, how Nigeria managed COVID-19 when the time comes. So please let us have your emails, yes. your emails, your full, is, is, full, is, um, you say what? Full details that will help us to build this um, database. Uh -huh. yes. Thank you very much. Any other speaker, please, quickly. Point of correction, sir. It is Mrs. Ebirim. Oh, it's Ebirim that made that comment. Point of correction, sir. I've it noticed. is Mrs. Ebirim. Yes, I've noticed that. It's Mrs. Eberim that made the comments. Yes, we've seen it, Mrs. Eberim. I've just seen it now. Thank you very much. Open up. Thank you. Any other comment or question to the guest speaker? And I must quickly recognize our last week's speaker, Israel Ebon, still much around with us. I can see him on the screen. So can I have more My comments? hands are up. My hands are up. Well, My hands are up. Okay. My hands are up. Gerard Adewale, please come, come on. <laughs> Dr. Gerard, come on. Okay, thank you. Who has his hand up then? My Edward hands are Fong. up. Oh, Edward, 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 Fong. Edward Fong. Yes. yes. Edward Fong. Edward Fong. Edward Fong. Yes, sir. Yes, director. Yes, director. Go ahead, go ahead. Edward, go ahead. Okay, Director, and uh, good day, Director, and all the participants. First of all, Director, I would really like to commend like all the ambassadors did for you to put us on a platform that, of course, is the most digital platform present day world. That shows already we have hit the ground running and we are at a good pacing for post COVID 19. So, a big congratulations to you and your team. I want to take uh, a little bit from what the Chinese ambassador said, which I believe is, is very, very, very are uh, important and he spoke in line with government giving the industry the creative industry and the ncac headquarters i mean giving us priority i remember when you came to jobs if you remember sometime two years ago you were in jobs and the commissioner said that the governor of Plato state had declared a state of emergency on tourism I remember I was there in that in that hall with you, and you showed us all the things that we need to know. But moving forward, 
because already we have to understand that what COVID has done is put us in a digital era. COVID has put us in a digital era and the workspaces become quite smaller and open us up to media and social media tools. And since we are talking about dynamism in culture, hello, can you hear me? Sir? Can you hear me? Hello, sir, can you hear me? Very well, very well, go ahead. Okay. And since we are talking about dynamism in culture, we are thinking of if we can start to build from inside, outside. If we build from the inside and outside, first of all, if we are going to start relating and getting like the, also the Chinese and the Bangladeshian man and the Indian man said about interrelation of culture, we will first of all need to educate both ourselves. And you know that in, in, um, in the dynamics of culture, we are talking about the age, the sex, the various skills. We would want to be able to bring our own up in such a way that we too inside Nigeria are able to know our own diversity enough to be able to start to embrace the outside. And all this can't really happen if we ourselves do not promote our culture through these means. And when you say dynamism, the way forward or which way forward, post COVID, we will have to really, really see that social media, especially this Zoom and all the we have to have NCAs in control of certain documentaries that will have to come up forcefully, I mean when I say forcefully, with an intention to attack the cultures to show what our cultures are. These are bit the Gwari man, you are coming in from Abuja, but I need to know the DG's culture. I need to know what is about your own culture. You need to know the Bureau man's culture. We need to know what the Yoruba man's culture is and the Igbo man's culture is. Now, post-COVID, I'm insisting on post-COVID because the workspace, we are not going to have so many meetings in a group of people any longer. It's going to be Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. And so we are going to depend on the machines that will progress our intentions over. So if the NCAC can actually get the government to, government needs to, because no matter what the private partnership is going to be, I can, I will not have enough to host a carnival that will get all the people together. But no matter how much I can put in 10 million naira to host a carnival, but it is government's coordination and government's leveling playground that will enhance that carnival. Edward, that was very, very important. I don't know if the guest um, speaker have anything to comment on this quickly before we move. Please take notes. A minute each for everyone, please, so that we can, we can take more people to comment. Does um, Mr. Dotun has any comment on that or any answer on that? Yes. Okay. Uh, Do you have anything to add? It's, it's, it's a very brief one. Okay. Uh, I love the idea that is proposing uh, the idea of private sector contributing to especially monumental efforts from government. If you look at a carnival, a carnival should be something you can, in, in current balance, tokenize, so that rather than us repeating efforts all over the place that don't amount to anything, uh, people who have small interests, uh, small interests of entrepreneurial interest can pull together and do big culturally relevant events. I, I commend it for that. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Dotson. Please, can I quickly have please? We didn't hear your last comments. We didn't hear your last comments. We, we didn't hear your last one minute, please. Yeah, we didn't hear your last statement. Yes. I said DJ Descent Storm. DJ Descent Storm. Are you there? Huh? Okay, sir, I'm here, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Okay, quickly, yes, sir. quickly, DJ. Good afternoon. Good All afternoon. Right. Sorry, DJ, DJ, this is we cannot hear you. We'll come back to you in a minute. And I wrote with We please. Wow. But I can hear you. I can hear you loud and clear. Are you sure? 
Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear, sir. Pause, please. One minute, quick, please. All right, sir. Yeah, like uh, like I just said now, uh, telling about um, uh, how large we are and, uh, of course, how the COVID-19 has uh, also affected us very negatively, the DJs in Nigeria. We have been not just pushed to the world by the uh, the unforeseen uh, situations from COVID-19, but this platform that you have created, sir, DG, and the and the comments you have also heard from the lead speaker and other persons. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, DJ. Thank you very much. I'm sure Zidji, you, I know, I you saw what happened That's yesterday. Nice. Our good brother and friend, Dele Momodu, had a Zoom party for his 60th birthday, and a DJ was there. So um, Dele has opened another chapter in that area. I'm sure very soon a lot of DJs will be you know, performing online, which is a new invention. Why not? I congratulate you for being part of this. Thank you very much. Can I quickly... Have uh, yes, Dr. Olsen. Odozi Arts. Yes, Thank you very much. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, please go ahead quickly. Yes, uh, DJ Yotumba, thank you very much for this one minute. My my name is uh, Princess Teresa Waweya Odozi. Yes. Um, I thank Mr. Dotton for the detailed lecture. I know with one minute, I really cannot go too far, but I will introduce myself. I'm a visual artist and a professional. And I'm also a gallery owner, which belongs to Nigerian gallery owners, and also a visual art training center. This leads me straight to uh, when the ambassador of uh, the Chinese Ali was speaking, you know, in terms, talking in terms of virtual uh, vocational training. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy about that. But there are very few areas I felt, uh, we say, the post-COVID. Post-COVID, I think it's more of the post-lockdown, because the COVID is still very much in reality. It's still very much on ground. It's not yet over. And um, there will be need for some supplies of preventive kits and masks and things to organization or professional bodies, and also the creation of online software for organized uh, towards exhibitions, which we are planning we could be having where government to support. And the very important one I, I always emphasize is production. Production in terms of which will reduce the low cost of dependency on importation of goods. Today we do visual, we do exhibitions, but most of the things we use are imported. And we really could, we do not produce anything. And we look at, again, the area of automation. So if you really, sir, could look into these and uh, liaise with other uh, professional um, ambassadors or countries, we'll would be very, very grateful. And looking forward to all the uh, Zoom meetings like this, where we really could have time and air out there. Thank you very much, sir. And thank you for this. Thank you very much, Princess. This is every thank Saturday, you, until further notice. Every Saturday, thank we you. have this section of interacting and bringing up a platform for us to interact as industry players. So every Saturday, oh, okay. thank you very much. Can I quickly have Undo White? Undo White. I raise up my hand. Uh, Undo White. Hello. Yeah, Undo That's White. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, please go ahead. Um, my heartly commendation for this, and um, I welcome everyone on the platform. Um, and I'm happy to be here. So, uh, blessing to everybody, and I understand that um, the idea is to find a way forward. And I've been around the culture for a while, and I understand that one of the most important things we need to be able to deconstruct is our intrinsic value of culture. So when we say intrinsic value, it means we are, we are all individualized on our cultural values. So we are struggling on that level because this is where we are. Until we were able to deconstruct our intrinsic value of culture, we cannot go to instrumental value or we cannot even go to the institutional value. And then someone mentioned Hello? education, um, educa um, cultural, educa um, cultural education. And I think it's very important because this is what everybody is doing now, cultural mediation. In France, people take arts to the people. And this is what we're all doing. We're going virtual to take culture to people. But we do we have the structure? I mean, uh, do we have the structure to view what we have as a country? 
uh, I was supposedly hoping that somewhere in this conversation we'll be thinking, how do we take our content up so somebody can view it online? So this is cultural mediation and we cannot educate people if we don't have, if we cannot allow them con to consume what we have. And what we have is what we can ask people to consume and engage with. And it has to be strategic for us to be able to deconstruct the idea of intrinsic value. And when I keep saying intrinsic value, that is where we begin to talk about our individual beliefs, our individual religious belief, and the things that we've been sold to, um, what matters to you and what doesn't matter to you. Once we can just construct that, we can move from, we can stick, we cannot go from the interest, um, the instrumental to the, the, the instrumental value. And this is where the government comes in. And if we are able to do that by having maybe something close to an implementable structure or an implementable policy that cut across or envelops all structure of culture in Nigeria that is implementable by if that everybody understands their role as a structure, as an institution, as a player, either as an artist, you understand that this is possible. I made a post one time um, when this started on the 8th of March, how um, the, 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 the Prime Minister of Germany was able to bring out 6 billion euros to support art. And last week I had a confirmation that artists or creatives in Germany receive about 6,000 to 5,000 euros each. Because in Germany, they have a policy that says art and science should be free. And because of that, they also have an enveloping policy that makes them vote 8.6 billion every year to subsidize art. Because high art, which is what we're trying to talk about, is expensive. And for us to consume it, it has to be subsidized. Everything we're talking, if we don't have a structure, an implementable structure, we will come back here probably next time to still talk about how do we go forward. And so that is why we're all taken aback, we're all taken, we're all in shock because COVID-19 came and there's no structure. And put it on another way to picture, so people could see that culture is the only thing where the epicenter of woman um, existence. Yes. Undo white. And it, Undo yeah. white. Undo white. You've made a fantastic contribution. Can I appeal to you that we still have over 60 people waiting? Please. I'll just like the last one. Last one. Okay, quickly. Yeah. So, um, so for us to understand our position as the epicenter of human existence, people went through or people survived this COVID-19 with cultural tools, movies, games, um, uh, name it. Most of the things that people survived the, 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 this period with are just cultural tools that we created. And so for us to begin to understand our position and our role in today's society is that we need to know that we are the epicenter of human existence. And the moment we begin to put that forward, I think our position in today's society will be definitely recognized more than where we are. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Undo White. I don't know if the guest lecturer has anything to add to that. Quick one, any? Yeah, guest lecturer. Uh, well, yes. Um, the, the, what I need to add here is that much as these things are commendable, we must remember that government cannot do it all. What we really need are structures that will enable significant members of the um, creative industry to collaborate to make these things happen. Uh, there's no way it should be just ideas thrown at government. Government would never be able to solve it all. Nice idea, yes, but we must have other epicenters of realizing it than government. Thank you. Iran from Russian Embassy. Mr. Iran, Mr. Ivan from Russia Embassy. Is he around? Mr. Ivan from Russian Embassy. Ivan. I V A N. Mr. Ivan from Russian Embassy. Yes. Mr. Ivan from Russian Embassy. Okay. Maybe network problem. Can I quickly have Mr. Kayode Adeyemi? Mr. Kayode Adeyemi. Can I have Mr. Kayode Adeyemi? Mr. 
Mr. Cody, are there me? Network problem? Mr. Cody, are there me? Yes, please. Mr. Cody, are there me? Mr. Cody, are there me? Okay. Can we go to iPhone B1897? Can we have that? iPhone BD1897? Are you there? Hello, good afternoon, sir. Afternoon, please go ahead, my brother. Yes, I'm Oliver I'm Wong, President Society of Nigerian Artists. That's the practicing body for um, visual artists in Nigeria, the professional body for visual artists in Nigeria. First, I want to commend uh, Mr. DG for this uh, initiative. Uh, it's a wonderful initiative for us to not only mitigate uh, the impact of COVID you know, on the creative sector in Nigeria, but also to chart a new agenda the way forward. I'd also like to thank uh, the guest speaker, Mr. Sunshaya, for a very insightful uh, um, um, lecture. Well, I'll go straight to a couple of points that I've noted here. Um, I think that uh, it's very important for us, more than ever before, to embrace technology. Um, I think for me, that's the way forward. Now, in embracing technology, it means that we need to look at policies that would uh, ensure that our creative products are well disseminated. And in doing that, of course, we have to look at intellectual property rights. So it means that existing laws look to, need to be looked at, maybe revised, because um, when you embrace technology, then it means that uh, um, your work can be more easily producible. So that's a very, I think, a very uh, poignant uh, area we need to uh, look into. Of course, there have to be new uh, forms, artists on their own, need to create work that is more easily transportable and they need to embrace social media. We need to look at uh, virtual, uh, virtual reality and artificial intelligence and how we can incorporate that. You know, and of course that comes along with all the existing laws and IP rights, you know, very, very important. So this is uh, just some of the uh, contributions that I would make. And of course, we need to monetize this platform. So it's not enough to look at existing laws, but how can artists and creatives sustain themselves? So we need to look at payment platforms and structures. And of course, uh, you know, uh, Nigeria needs to be very careful, especially when trying to make money over the internet, because uh, we also have a reputation. And therefore, it's very important for government uh, policyholders uh, policy makers and, and stakeholders to sit down, you know, for us to chart a way forward. So for me, I've raised three points now, you know, uh, dissemination, intellectual property rights, new ways of making easily producible art, and of course, payment platforms. Thank you very much, Mr. DJ. President, you've spoken as a representative of the people in the sector. I want to yes, assure sir. you that everything you've said is documented, we are definitely going to come up with a, 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 com a compendium to show all your comments, including your photographs. It's not a joking matter again. The world must face the reality of what is going on. So I assure you we'll be back with some view documents. The guest speaker, do you have anything to add in this? Okay, thank you. No, my mute. My mute, my mute. Uh, can I call Mr. German Anikulako, one of the best hands and faces in the industry? One of them, Mr. German Anikulako. Yeah. Good afternoon. I thought I could remain uh, anonymous. DJ, nice to see you again. I can never be anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much for the initiative. Uh, the question I was asking, I actually sent to you privately. I was wondering, because that was the question I asked when the minister started, uh, when they launched the initiative on the, from the ministry. And I was wondering why the agencies were not involved. There were some of the fundamental issues that have to be addressed or to be taken at ministerial level. And the agencies, especially the NCAC, have roles to play. For instance, that, I mean, if we had the cultural policy in place 
I'm sure the effect of this COVID and seeing the way it took us by surprise will not have been, uh, will have been mitigated. If you have the endowment fund for the art, why do you need to call individuals to be the ones who will be championing this? Some of the individuals who are in the committee are baggages. Are you asking members of the creative industry to go back to people with baggages? I don't see how you can make any any uh, any progress from that. So I was just wondering because this is a very important initiative, really because you've also got the world involved. Uh, looking at the ambassador, the diplomat, the cultural manager that are taking part. And if this conversation is not feeding into what the federal government, which was already which NCS also represents, if this is not feeding into whatever they are coming up with, I'm not sure that we're going to make progress. I'm wondering. Well, we've had cultural summit, uh, cultural summit in the last four years. We've had about three. The documents are not even in our view to even review them to see, okay, what could we tap from there? Because we have to read the minutes of the last meeting. We can't just be having endless meeting when we don't know what, what the last minute has been. I mean, that's just my contribution. Please permit me to go anonymous. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman, it's always a pleasure to share thoughts with you in the industry. This is wonderful. I want to assure you all your comments. All the segments of approach will be looked into. This document will be holistically captured everything that has happened during this um, our program of um, online conferencing, and I assure you, it will signal a new beginning for the industry. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Ngozi Duru, please. Ngozi Duru, mute all these people. Ngozi Duru, oh yeah, oh yeah. Ngozi Duru. Ngozi Duru, please, you have the floor. Please go ahead. Okay. Ngozi is still holding on. Please, can I quickly have Margaret Adenike? Margaret Adenike, please. Are you there? Omita, Omita. Margaret Adenike, please go ahead. Please unmute yourself. Can somebody send it? Margaret Adenike, can you unmute your system, your device? Go ahead. Thank you. Unmute, unmute, please. We can't hear you. Okay, they have called. Okay, please. Can we go to Margaret? Okay. Hello, sir. Okay, please go ahead quickly. We can hear you now. Sir, I said I really appreciate this opportunity, but I want us to look at the bedrock, the foundation of this organization we are into. We know I'm a teacher in secondary school in Delta State in Agbo James of College, and we all know what we pass through as students of arts right from the childhood seeing you doing art is like you are wasting time and we know that the, the foundation of this program this organization is the students in primary and secondary school why the system was on before the covid it, it, so it was a real challenge to get the students to move on with this subject because parents are not really interested majority are not interested in it now with this covid now online teaching my question is, how do we now go to enforce and encourage the students stroke parents? So allow the students to be more. Hello, are you with me? Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Very well, go ahead. Please hear me. Yeah, we can hear you, go ahead. Yes, I said my question is, what, which, which measure are we putting in place to ensure and enforce the teaching of art in from primary school to, to secondary school level so that this organization can have hope. Because without these children in primary and secondary school, before we know it, this spirit of art might be nowhere in Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It's a pleasure. You've um, made a very good contribution there. It's part of the comments we're gathering to make right. the documents that will focus for the future of our great country. So I thank you for that contribution, Ngozi. Can I quickly have Infinity Note 5? Infinity. Yeah, thank you, sir. Yeah. Please, what's your name? Yeah, my name is, 
Yeah, my name is Nentawe Gomiar. I'm the Secretary General of the Kaduna State Creative Arts Stakeholders Forum. I'm particularly concerned about uh, financing, which is very, very critical for the arts sector. And uh, one aspect also is the, the issue of insurance policy. Uh, most of events that have, uh, like in Kaduna, for instance, most of the events that are not holding any longer, uh, there's no insurance cover whatsoever. And so whatever investment that have gone in, you know, have been lost. So, uh, uh, and also, you know, in terms of financing for equipment for the use of arts, it's only in this part of the world where you have to pay 100% before you make purchases of equipment. So uh, for you to be at par, you know, with your other colleagues around the world, you need the right equipment and then it's difficult. So we need to look into the critical aspect of financing, most especially for the banks. Uh, I know there's some funds set up again. We have to look at financing and insurance as well. So uh, briefly, this is uh, the points I want to raise. Thank you for the opportunity. Okay, thank you very much. I don't know if the guest lecturer have any comments on this before I just add something? The guest lecturer, yeah, anything? Quickly. Yeah, quickly, sir. Yeah, okay. Uh, they, they, yes, once again, I need to remind us that they, there are some of these strategies that we cannot discuss in open discourses like this because they relate to fundamental strategies. Um, one thing is sure, entrepreneurs need to be sensitized about the fact that there are opportunities in the cultural sector. We, we probably need a platform that is precisely targeted to them to show them that there's money to be made in this sector. Uh, that is my recommendation. Yes, these things are valid uh, needs, but uh, we need to discuss the strategies a bit uh, behind the cameras. Uh, thank thank you. you very much, Mr. Speaker. Let me just add one or two items to that. Basically, every aspect of life has its own security guide. That is the security guide of the cultural uh, life we're indulged with. So please bear with us. Some of these things have to be discussed at a later date and packaged for the future. So I thank you very much. Can I quickly have Margaret Adenike Ogwe? Okay. Hello, sir. Yeah. We didn't hear you. We didn't hear you very well earlier on. Are you Hello, sir. Okay. Yes. Can I? Your 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 line is not clear yet. Can I quickly have anybody raising up their hand? Is my line clear now? Oh, it's clear now. Okay. So I can take you now. Please. Okay. My question. The okay. question I have is about primary school and secondary school students in the country that uh, we need to put them into consideration so that they would, especially parents, okay. you know, they're at home, parents should be able to allow them to continue with this, their skill. Because even when they were in class, face to face, that is one on one with the teachers. When you give them homework, you see the way parents complain that it is time consuming. They need to focus on science, mathematics, and so on, which they are also important. So my question is, we should try and put a measure in place, maybe like a jingle, to improve and encourage both students and parents about arts in primary and secondary school so that this organization can have future without these children in primary and secondary school, we are nowhere because they are the ones to take over from us. Thank you Sir. very much, Margaret. I really appreciate your comment and to assure you that we shall make effort to catch them young. That's the focus. I want to assure you, we will make sure we catch the young ones early enough to imbibe the spirit of this sector of creative industry. Now, quickly, can I have Tony T? Quickly, Tony T. Tony T, is he there? Tony T? Okay, this distinguished participant, we just have a few minutes to go. And um, Tony T, can we hear you quickly? Tony T, okay. I think the network problem, I will just quickly go into um, 
Okay. Is um no more hand raise. Okay, infinity note five is spoken. So why is his hand still up? He get it down. Okay, distinguished participant. Distinguished participant. Um, I'd like to thank you all. Please, can we quickly invite Dr. Lizzie? Is she there? Dr. Lizzie? I'm on, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please go Okay. Distinguished participants, particularly those that took out their time to join us from different parts of the world, I also want to place on record our appreciation of members of the Diplomatic Committee in Nigeria, particularly the ambassadors who were here with us. Share thoughts. My what? Please go ahead. My face. Okay, fine. We want to appreciate you, each and every one of you, every one of you that spent time with us these past one and a half hours, rubbing minds with us on cultural dynamism, particularly as it affects Nigeria post COVID 19. The discussion has only just started. And it will not end until all of us are done talking. And the change that we all desire is upon us for our sector. We will continue the discussion this time next week, which is on Saturday, 30th of May, 2020. Mrs. Susan Aporiaye, who is the president, National, Asso National Association of Nigeria Travel Agencies, NANTA, will be speaking to us on creating new business opportunities for travel agents. We are all thinking proactively post COVID-19 for this sector, for the entire industry, and for each and every one of us that is a major stakeholder, and above all, for the economy and its impact on our lives. Please join us, same time, same station, as they say. I want to, at this juncture, invite the convener, Otumba Shegurunshe, with DG NCAC, and African President, World Craft Council, for his closing remarks. Thank you very much for being part of this. God bless you. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Lizzie. I wish to thank you all for your participation and contributions. We are highly honored and delighted to have you on this platform and on this session. It is our expectation that we will continue to engage in this interaction in the interest of our industry. I assure you all that discussions and opinion expressed at this meeting series will be put into productive and proactive use in all ways possible. Please keep a date with us next Saturday. I uh, will be unveiling one of the biggest tour of sites culturally and rich aspects of Nigerian culture. Next week, we'll be unveiling it. It will be a pride to every Nigerian and all visitors that will tour it online. It's going to be virtual and it's going to be first of its kind, capturing all the states of the Federation, including Abuja. This is going to be a one product that will speak volume for our great country. It is a promise to be that all the culture journey through the north and cranes of Nigeria. Your Excellencies, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, and gentlemen of the press, it is our pleasure to thank you most sincerely and to look forward to receiving you next week, Saturday, it's going to be an every Saturday affair. Don't forget the idea is to create a platform to interact and share views with one another for the betterment of this industry and our great country. And to hear from other countries, like you saw today, we have over 15 ambassadors. Right now, I could still see a lot of the ambassadors patiently being with us to the end of this program. May I once again 
wish our Muslim brothers and Christ, uh, Muslim brothers and sisters a wonderful um, Salla celebration. And by the grace of God, we will be meeting back on Saturday. I wish you all the best. God bless and bye to everybody. Bye. Please, I want everybody to show this. Bye. 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 Ambassador, bye. Your Excellencies, bye. bye. Everyone, bye. 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 See you next week. See you next week. Bye. 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 See you next Saturday. Bye. 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 Bye